Hi everyone, this is Cat Dangerous. I wanted to make a guide on how to succeed in Pinnacle of Kings as a free-to-play player. Um, and of course, the points I make here will be helpful to those who um, like to spend a little in order to advance and succeed in the game. I did want to point out that um, I was able to get first place overall during the last Pinnacle of Kings, which is still in progress. We're about to do Kingdom versus Kingdom fight. Um, but the preparation stage is over, as you can see here. Um, so my first and foremost tip is to hoard what you'll need for the event. What do you need? You need construction speed ups. You need knowledge speed ups. You need troop training speed ups. Not that it scores you based on how many minutes of troop training speed ups you use, but just because you do have to generate troops and you want to do as many as you can during the windows that they give you, um, for training troops and earning points. Um, you're also going to want, you know, to be mindful of where your stamina is and perhaps, you know, on the margin you can gain a few extra points by being mindful of when the next phase is beginning so that you can maybe send some troops out to gather resources, for instance, um, just a couple hours before the phase shift so that maybe you'll get a few more wagon loads coming back, um, which will give you some extra points, you know, just sort of on the margins. Um, as you can see from the score here, Iron's Wrath was right behind me. I believe that's less than 5,000 um, points difference there out of 9 million and change. So I won by a very small margin. Um, so, you know, I think the marginal playing is, is helpful. Um, if I had not saved up as much as I had and done everything I could uh, for the duration of this marathon event, I would not have come in first. I'm certain of that. Now, I do want to say early on um, that during the Gemstone Boost Day, the airship parts event passed through and it awarded some really great R5 and R4 gems because I was able to earn all the rewards in that event. Um, I just decided to go all in. I threw all the gems on. Everyone else, I think, was doing that too. <laughs> um, almost all of the top five or ten players got some pretty substantial gem rewards and put them on. And um, and at that point, I changed tactics and just decided to invest everything I had in this event. <laughs> so um, so anyway, so for Stronghold Power Boost Day, I had um, only a score of rank 53. You can see I put some points on the board there through some gear upgrades, but I was wearing Demon Hunter and I was only able to make, I think, one additional piece perhaps. Um, and then I had some construction speed ups that I was able to use that day. And then I did whatever gathering or um, threat or army camp killing that they allowed us to do that day for points. So, um, so optimize all of that. Do not craft the gear upgrade prior to the window for earning points because crafting it will charge you with the power boost um, and upgrade your gear score even if you have not equipped it. So be mindful of that. Just wait to craft it until this phase is open. Um, and then remember, there's another gear boost day um, on the last day. So that's about how much power you gain through making gear upgrades. Um, when it comes to anywhere in here that you see um, construction or research, sometimes they call it knowledge in here, but they mean research. That is about not points gained from power, but rather how many speed ups you use. So I think I used almost or about 100,000 minutes worth of speed ups that I'd been hoarding and you know maybe 30,000 of construction, maybe 20 or 30 of research, a bunch of my general or unrestricted speed ups, and I think nearly 50,000 or so of troop training speed ups. Um, so save those speed ups and um, you'll need the resources too in order to be able to make the construction updates, you know, the research updates and the troop generation. So um, 
you know, we had also fortunately just uh, kicked out a few players who were inactive, maybe four or five. And so I was hitting those castles for all I was worth, just trying to get a little bit of extra resources so that I could um, use the speed ups. So um, again, save all of your gear, put it on, uh, craft it and put it on during the window that they give you. For gemstone boost, again, there you want to save up all of your uh, gem materials. Don't use them. I will not use any, even though I do have more between this Pinnacle of Kings and the next Pinnacle of Kings. Um, I have 200 boxes um, of the chest <laughs> that I got here. Um, let me see if I can find total points rewards. These, so this is my first place prize and this would allow me to make some really good gems. I'm not going to do it. I'm saving it for the next Pinnacle of Kings. So hoard, 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 hoard and then spend during the appropriate phase. Now I do want to make a couple pointers on um, gathering day. Try to send the large march that you have, largest march that you have into the alliance mine. I think there's a 20% increase in gathering there. Uh, hopefully it's silver and that will allow you to, a silver mine, that will allow you to get um, the maximum points there. Um, a non-troop ability boost day, I do want to show something to you, two things actually on that. So in your inventory, if you've ranked fairly high in the past on some events, you probably have some of these one-time recruitments. There's a 5,000 one and a 20,000 one. And um, you just touch it and then you go over to your troop making facilities like this one. And um, when you go to hit the train button, it'll show you instead of making 1,162, which is what it's showing here, or actually the max number for me is 1,790. If I had popped the 21, it would say, you're about to make 21,790 troops. And instead of being 23 hours, it will be, you know, 10 days or 12 days or something really long. And um, here's, here's an example. This is a three day going, um, for the spearmen that I'm making, and you can see I added 5,000 there. I'm making 6,790. So I don't generally use those one-time recruitments, but I use them here because unlike the construction and research um, points that you can earn during Pinnacle of Kings for troops, it's actually the, the power you gain through troops during the event, and it's not about troop training speed-ups, um, how many you use. So just get this going, and if it finishes before Pinnacle of Kings, do not touch it. Just leave them sitting there and collect them on the day when you get points for troops. Um, and the other thing that I want to show you, if I have any here, let me, I probably don't, but if you go to train, you can see I own 97,000 and change um, worth of uh, carabiniers. I'm going to go to my dragoons. Okay, so do you see this little up arrow down here near 2,943? If you click that, you can see that you have the opportunity to level some up. Now, you want to check the number at the top because it says heavy dragoons, your stronghold must have 2,943. Well, that's how many I have. So I don't want to upgrade those because my stronghold must have those, apparently. Um, but if you have made a bunch of... Um, tier eights for example and and now you're able to craft some tier nine troops for instance you can go to this huge stockpile of tier eights that you have hit this little you know up arrow and then start upgrading those and it will take some resources um, in order to upgrade you can see there the resources it would take me to upgrade these troops which were tier sevens um, but it will be less than it takes you to craft them in the first place and it will also take less time so here I can do 1,790 units for only five hours and change. Um, whereas if I were to make, you know, 1,790 units of the tier eights um, from scratch, it would take more resources. You could see here how many, and it would take 23 hours. So a trick that I do is to craft some lower level units. Um, don't know if I've done that here. I had 7,000 of something there. Looks like I haven't done it here. Um, but I'll, I'll work on crafting some that might be a couple tiers below the tier that is my max tier and then just use this um, just use this level up feature or upgrade uh, in order to save resources during that event. So in other words, I spent some before the event opened um, and also to save time so that I can upgrade more than I can 
craft from scratch. So two tips on that. Um, also, I'll point out that if you happen to have um, this ability here, the, I'm not going to use it, but it's called development. Um, it will allow you to shave off some of the time. It reduces the time by 20%. Um, so I'm going to point out to you that I do generally like to use that um, when I get a power boost. Um, you know, when the, when the points I get are based on the power boost gained because then I can use speed ups and I save 20% of my speed ups by doing this. I can just cycle through a bunch of research or construction projects and save 20%. Um, but I don't really want to do this in this event, especially if my resources are scarce. I mean, I can, but if my resources are scarce, what will happen if I pop that and then start doing all of my developments is that, um, if I'm not being judged based on um, the power resulting from the research or from the construction project, but rather how many speed ups I used, you could probably already intuit, I don't want to reduce the time. I want to have fewer projects that I'm doing and just go ahead and waste, if you will, the speed ups because I might not be able to afford that sixth or seventh or tenth construction or research project um, during a marathon like this if I've been using that and shaving off 20% um, of the time. <laughs> so just a point there, if you're used to using that, I think you might not want to use it in something like this when it's about how many speed ups you're using and not about the power to be gained through doing the research or upgrading a building. Uh, and I think that's probably it as far as my tips and tricks. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it there, but just keep in mind um, that you just want to save everything up. Don't use them during Alliance Crunch. Um, just save everything up and use it during prep phase. And um, again, this time I had a, a fortunate event passing through for Gem Boost Day that allowed me to get first. And then I just put everything into it. But um, the last Pinnacle of Kings that came around, I was able to get seventh um, without having any fortuity, like the um, Airship Parts event coming through that allowed me to boost my score. So you could still perform pretty well as free to play using these strategies. I hope they help you.